ది ఎసెన్స్ ఆఫ్ రిభు గీత హెచ్ రామమూర్తి కండెన్స్డ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద సంస్కృత్ ఎపిక్ శివ రహస్యం పార్ట్ సిక్స్ ద రిభు గీత ఇస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ టెక్స్ కమెండెడ్ బై భగవాన్ శ్రీ రమణ ఫార్ శ్రవణ మనన అండ్ నిదిధ్యాసన బై ఓనెస్ట్ సీకర్స్ ద రిభు గీత ఇస్ టు శివ రహస్యం what the bhagavad gita is to the mahabharata we have heard it said by old devotees like ramaswami pillai that the recitation of the ribu gita by ashram inmates in tamil as translated by bikshu shastri ulaganatha swamigal and its elucidation by bhagavan was an unforgettable experience during the early 20s of this century also as stated by bv narasimha swami in self realization bhagavan and his disciples used to sit up especially after the night meal reading books like ribhu gita and kaivalya navanitam each by turn reading a verse or a set of verses the reading used to continue for 2 hours or more at a stretch and occasionally the whole night Bhagavan has said these readings from Ribhu Gita are as good as samadhi evidently such a continuous reading induces samadhi in fact page after page nay line after line of Ribhu Gita merely goes on rubbing into one the nature of the self with a constant study of such works the mind would easily get into the mood of samadhi shiva expounded the knowledge of brahman the self atma that is brahman to parvati once on mount kailasha shanmukha of six faces the second son of parvati the younger brother of vigneshwara the lord over impediments learned this from her obeisance to them all sage ribu a mind born son of brahma the creator like sanaka narada and others once had this instruction from shiva himself called shiva knowledge shivanyana obeisance to the sage in the course of his wanderings on earth ribhu happening to reach the himalayan slopes and worshiping the lord of kedara at mount kedara was sought after by the sages there to enlighten them about the knowledge of the vedas and the great aphorisms received by him direct from lord shiva to enable them to attain liberation from samsara the repetitious birth death cycle the discourse by ribhu in response is an episode in the sanskrit epic shiva rahasyam The self-contained exposition of monism by Ribhu has later been referred to as Ribhu Gita in Tamil translation published about 100 years ago. The Ribhu Gita primarily relates to the concept of Brahman and the self that is Brahman. It reiterates in about 2000 verses the Advaita non-dual view that the Brahman also referred to as the supreme brahman or that is all that exists and exists not that nothing else exists the self and the brahman are the same and there being nothing else i indeed am that i am all and that is myself awareness of this is liberation which results by way of knowledge and the certitude i am brahman The opening chapters of the Ribhu Gita succinctly describe Brahman and the self which is enlarged upon in later chapters with examples and reiterations repetitions and re-repetitions to drive home the truth the self atma addressing nidaga and other sages ribhu begins with an explanation of the self atma if whatever exists is to be classified as self or non self there's nothing that is non self this certitude 
that there is nothing as non-self is to be realized. There is only Brahman alone. There being nothing other than the self, there is nothing as the mind or body. There being no body, there is nothing as aging or decay. There being nothing as hand or feet, there is no work or walking. There being no creator, Brahma, apart from the self, there is no creation, no sustenance and no hurry, the sustainer. There is no world here, no world of gods or the Vedas dealing with gods. Guru does not exist, which implies there is no disciple. Following on this, there is no dharma, righteous conduct or prescribed duties. No concept of truth or a concept of untruth arising with it. No fear or fearlessness, which postulates fear. No death, no birth, no birth-death cycle, no bondage and consequently no liberation. There is nothing as interior or exterior, nothing as complete, implying something as incomplete, nothing as little or great, nothing which can be given as an example for another, neither you nor I, neither this nor that. No mind to think that the universe is Brahman alone, or I am the supreme Brahman, or you are also only Brahman. Hearing this, Nidaga inquired, Who are you indeed? Tell me that. On hearing which one is released immediately from the hardship of samsara, birth death cycle, with its sorrow and suffering. Brahman, Ribu explains, I indeed am the supreme Brahman. I indeed am the supreme happiness, all consciousness whose meaning cannot be given, who is without a meaning, pure, enlightened, ever blissful, eternal perfection, non-dual, indescribable, immeasurable, undiscussable, beyond comprehension, without beginning or end, without any resolve or purpose to achieve, not composed of any insentient matter, not woven together out of any components, devoid of activity, devoid of ego, devoid of differences, devoid of names and forms or attachments, neither a boy, nor a youth, nor an old man, existing everywhere, the self, that is all, solely the nature of knowledge, a nature that exists by itself, the complete undivided essence, self-luminous, not the illuminator of anything else. Nidaga inquires, Deen to tell us the knowledge given out by Shankara and who all qualify for Brahmanhood. Ribhu continues, You indeed are Brahman. You indeed are the Supreme Guru, all manner of being, the changeless, the accomplished, the ancient, the immortal, equable, peaceful, devoid of time, the higher and the lower, the liberated, indeed liberation itself without afflictions, devoid of time, the witness, ever without a witness, the full and perfect. You are in all beings, without a second, attributeless, the enlightened, serene, ever without enmity, ever without action, all pervasive, devoid of indications or qualities, devoid of all, the undivided essence, abiding only in yourself, the truth, ever the nature of consciousness space unfettered bliss supreme of the nature of consciousness bliss. Whoever you are, you are he of the nature of the substratum of all, devoid of all differences of meaning, devoid of disturbance, immersed in the waters of your own joy. You alone exist in the kingdom of the self. Bow only to your own self. 
do not perceive anything outside of yourself do not swerve from your own nature blossom within your own nature no different from your own nature see yourself everywhere enjoy yourself everywhere unreality of the phenomenal world ribu continues elaborating on the unreality of the phenomenal world the manifest phenomenal world a world picture so called never was created nor does it exist as the phenomenal world in its entirely never exists thought and such do not exist nor egoity individual soul or the jiva no effects of delusion no doer no action nothing to be done nothing as one or two no mantra no tantra no prescribed methods of learning like shravana listening manana reflection nididhyasana profound meditation no samadhi savikalpa or nirvikalpa no measure no measurement indeed there is nothing as ignorance or lack of discrimination none of the traditional concepts no such thing as present no earth fire water air space anywhere no gods no guardians of the directions no father no guru at any time nothing afar or near no end middle or any other state no pairs of opposites no reality or unreality no communities no caste no refuge nothing customary nothing as the sextet of sama dama and such for explanation of the sextet refer to glossary in ribu gita sat publication no niyama physical and mental regulations no yama ethical restraints of the scheme of yoga all is consciousness in further explanation the sage sets out that all is only consciousness full of consciousness the five elements brahma hari shiva past and future substance and time the knowable and knowledge conversation and words true and false beginning and end are all only consciousness as also rudra and other deities men beasts gods and demons the seer and the seen what is fixed and what is not all things wondrous the body any characteristic cause and effect form and formlessness merit and demerit also are only consciousness worship of the formless at this stage of the discussion there is an interlude in the text by suta the narrator about the worship of the formless in the mind the worship of the one whose body is space is done internally in the mind the mantras are isha vasya dwelt in by the lord and other upanishadic passages that all is pervaded by ishvara a seat is offered as also garments and praise to the isana linga ishvara envisaged as a linga of the cosmos giving ablution to the supreme one in the thought that he cannot be wetted and offering garments in the thought that he is clothed in space so devoid of garments offering sweet smelling flowers in the thought that he is without a nose or smell or face or appearance offering a lamp and light on a wick to the one in the thought that he is self illumined offering cooked food to one who devours all all the time and making mental circumvolutions and prostrations to one who strides over the worlds it is those who know not that offer worship by an endless parade of symbolism 
with a mind set on rituals those who know however worship in wordly in abstract meditation their minds attuned to the prescribed injunctions one undivided essence everything though appearing discrete is of the nature of one undivided essence rasa ribhu teaches there is only one undivided essence diverse disparate instances are cited to drive home this point with no grouping or classification or sequence of items examples of such items with no classification except that they are generally in alphabetical sequence are given here to emphasize the point the atom abode brahman body the changeless the city contemplation the consumable the diet dissolution devotee earth eternality existence the exterior the ear father friend the gods the guru the gross what is to be grasped the great the highest the husband the head the home heaven the individual soul i the immortal joy japa knowledge the king light lordship the lord mantra mind mother moon the non existent the nose the name the oblation oneself people the perfectly full religious rites religious vows relative the sky scent scriptures the self also the supreme the subtle strength the secret shiva sun the trinity brahma vishnu shiva thought the trivial the transcendental the vedas virat the cosmic person victory water witness you whatever is separate from the one undivided essence there is nothing apart from the nature of the one undivided essence world as unreal as the horns of a hare there follows a chapter containing the unreality of the world to the horns of a hare the phenomenal world whatever little one hears of it the form that is seen and the form of the seer are all declared as unreal as the horns of a hare in the same tenor as other portions of the teaching numerous examples are given as being of the nature of the horns of a hare the pentad of elements mind intellect egoity creation existence destruction the world galaxies merit demerit victory delusion desires anger greed infatuation pride love steadfastness guru and disciple cross body subtle body cause and effect the enjoyer the enjoyable and enjoyment tranquility inquiry happiness waking dream deep sleep the 24 tattvas verities all the worlds all dharmas with their philosophies all learning all ignorance all castes and communities holy shrines and waters all meetings with the wise the great all duality all vedanta all settled conclusions all definitions of scriptural statements whatever little is known whatever is seen in this world whatever one hears from the guru whatever one contemplates upon in one's thoughts whatever is decided upon by the intellect whatever is brought out or explained by words whatever is sensed by all the sense organs whatever object is renounced whatever manifests as existence whatever is imagined in the mind whatever is determined as the self whatever are considered external words 
whatever is inquired into by the mind whatever is said to be the soul whatever the word transmigration signifies whatever is found in the puranas whatever is defined in the vedas whatever the stand of all the upanishads all is brahman alone ablution mantra tarpana homa referring to an inquiry by nidaga about where ribu has the traditional ablution snana or bath the mantra for this the time for ablution how tarpana pouring libations of water homa prescribed daily sacrifices is performed ribu explains that they can all be performed directed to the self and brahman the bath in the self is the great ablution none other repeating scores of times that all this is indeed the supreme brahman i am brahman alone the mantra for ablution is similar chanting excluding me there is no water all this indeed is the supreme brahman i am brahman alone the mantra i am brahman i am it is assured will destroy all sins sorrow diseases of the intellect the defect of desire the defect of conceptualizing sankalpa lack of discrimination and millions of defects mistaken notions of the body this will reveal knowledge of the self remove the idea of non self confer indescribable bliss knowledge renouncing the 7 million great mantras which can only confer hundreds of millions of births one should resort to the japa of this one mantra i am brahman i am immediately one attains liberation whoever hears this even once the teaching eulogizes becomes brahman himself the daily tarpana the libation of water in the manner of the prescribed daily tarpana to gods seers and mains and others is explained at length the tarpana to brahman consists of meditation on several ideas such as the manifold universe does not exist forever there is nothing as this there is only brahman ever complete the daily homa sacrificial act such as those enjoined on brahmin householders of offerings to all created beings deceased ancestors superior gods in hospitality to guests recitation of vedas etc is also likewise a meditation such as i am brahman i am pure i am eternal i am the lord i am of the nature of the supreme self the homa reiterates the unreality of all the discussion is further interspersed with brahman being all all being unreal the jeevan mukta the characteristics of a jeevan mukta one who is liberated while yet in the body is explained at great length briefly stated one who is a jeevan mukta abides solely in the self he is of the firm conviction that he is the same as brahman he is the self consciousness attributeless higher than the highest beyond the triad of bodies gross subtle casual he has no body or such has no trace of the ego one who abides only in consciousness ever satisfied everywhere abides in the self ever complete in the self is of just one nature devoid of any thoughts of being separate he has nothing of mind intelligence ego senses defect delusion desires anger joy faults characteristics attachments worlds sense organs 
such as ear nose eyes tongue mind no distinguishing marks time space ablution renunciation holy rivers gods shrines birth knowledge position speech punya papa nothing to see i am brahman i am consciousness i am the highest self luminous one pointed myself the lord of myself perceive myself as of the nature of myself one who is thus is called a jivan mukta one who sees only himself in himself who abides only in himself who exists in his own self who sees himself in the domains of his own self is called a jivan mukta this explanation of the jivan mukta is hard to come by in all the vedas declares ribhu videha mukti liberation outside the body one who is liberated outside the body the videha mukta is one who does not remember whatever he has discarded and not discarded one who is of the nature of a brahman the peaceful self who is formless blissful abiding in himself one who is the self of all not a single self or the witness of all one who is as the ideal self the beloved self the self which plays the silent self the natural self the shining self the originless self the immortal self the blissful self the dear self the liberated he who is without the concepts of truth or non truth ignorance or knowledge sentience or insentience without meditation or non meditation neither with a goal or without a goal non existent or existent who is someone and not any one a little and nothing who has no remembrance of the body neither the gross nor the subtle at the time of leaving the body who does not think i indeed am brahman consciousness one is a videha mukta in the words of ribhu relishing the nectarian essence of brahman as his support himself the nectarian essence of brahman and satisfied in the nectarian essence of brahman blissful in the great brahman bliss shining in brahman bliss the great luminary of brahman bliss blissful in the essence of the brahman bliss ever in the continuous nectar of brahman blissful in brahman and always in bliss he who is the experience of brahman bliss the bliss of worship of shiva the brahman nectar who relishes the essence of brahman bliss is elated in brahman bliss belonging to the family of brahman nectar surrounded by people in brahman bliss residing in the delectable brahman nectar remaining in the temple of brahman bliss reciting constantly the mantra of brahman bliss the end of whose body is brahman bliss whose senses are brahman bliss whose knowledge is that of the nectar of brahman intoxicated in the bliss of brahman brimming with the nectar and essence of brahman ever established in brahman self is the videha mukta self brahman is all ribhu reverts time and again to the topics of their being all and brahman being all there is an exhortation thus look at the self alone consider yourself to be the self be in yourself experience the self yourself being happy only in one's own self considering oneself as the self one should perceive oneself as the self understanding oneself as the self oneself satisfied in one's own self oneself filled up by one's own self enjoying oneself one's own self oneself full of love for oneself one should reflect only on one's own self only the self is to be heard 
the self alone is to be desired the self alone attended to always brahman likewise is all the things that are when they are looked upon as brahman all differences unreal all differences are unreal differences such as this and you forms here and there interactions differences of philosophy differences of desire and of the world differences of duality of the phenomenal of wakefulness dream and deep sleep and the fourth state of doer and action of qualities of the nature of taste and such of characteristics between the existent and the non-existent within the existent and non-existent of is and is not of misapprehension of differences as sankalpa and vikalpa all differences ever due to knowledge or ignorance and non-difference are simply unreal also are unreal the pentad of sensory organs the pentad of organs of action the pentad of sense data pentad of elements pentad of deities pentad of sheets sextet of sheets sextet of modifications sextet of anxieties sextet of enemies sextet of times sextet of seasons the 12 months the year these various terms are explained at length in the grocery to the ribu gita text published by sat santa cruz california there is repetition of everything being consciousness summary of settled conclusions the topic of the summary of settled conclusions in brief states i am alone the supreme brahman the highest of the high the peaceful self one that reaches everywhere the eternal the attributeless the cause all the world the liberator consciousness the innermost of all the self of all that is composed of the five elements and their quintuplication you and i the imperishable the immutable the illuminator the creator the protector the certainty the witness of the nature of the non dual the bodiless my own support the great space possessed by parts ever the front and the posterior without attitudes the limits of attitudes the resplendent the auspicious the pauseless continuity the pure the attributeless bodiless desireless delusionless the knowledge and that is easily obtainable the knowledge that is rare even for the wise the supreme light the supreme abode i indeed am you indeed i am not even i renunciation the teaching urges total renunciation saying renouncing all forms be of the certitude that all is brahman that is the truth renounce the remembrance of prakriti manifestation and resort to the remembrance of brahman then renouncing even that be firm in your own nature renouncing further the established nature remain only as the self renouncing the renunciation even ever leave off the idea of any differences surrounding yourself yourself abide in yourself yourself unreality of duality the topic of negation of names and forms also urges that all is brahman there is nothing else i indeed am the supreme brahman having heard all the duality explained to be imaginary all this duality brought in for purposes of explanation should be forgotten in a second and abandoned like a scrap of wood or rusted iron an example is given when the mother is dead people should be called in for crying over the loss distributing dravya goods or money 
the pentad of dravyas substances the elements earth water fire air space is like the crime unreal secret initiation they follow instructions said to be the secret from shankara which in brief reiterate brahman is all giving such variety of examples as before such as brahman is the vedas the truth the trinity of gods the fleeting moment the letters of the alphabet like om shiva the exhaled inhaled and retained breath brahman alone is nothing else is some ignore muses talk only about duality they are not fit to be spoken to not to be honored not fit to be bowed to unworthy of attention even brahman is also nothing else except existence consciousness bliss transcending time intellect mind transcending all it is the transcendent form certitude the hallmark of the teaching being the perfectly full self of form certitude filled with all the reality of form certitude being the peaceful self of form certitude the jivatma of form certitude be as you please in all states and times form certitude here is alone the hallmark of the knowledge of the teaching the cause of attaining the treasures of liberation acting in this manner alone enables the firmness that i am indeed brahman be of the conviction that nothing else exists then renouncing even that conviction be just as the one renouncing even that ever remain without any attributes renouncing this too one should transcend all words renouncing this again focus on just being consciousness renouncing even the transcendence of the self focus only on brahman renounce being only consciousness alone also focus on just all silence renouncing which also focus on ineffable quiescence renouncing this further take refuge in the quiescence of the mind renouncing that also take to the quiescence of jiva renouncing this focus on the void of the jiva renouncing attainment of the void exist as you are renouncing also that existence which is beyond the range of the words and mind do not speak of anything afterwards or perceive anything afterwards or else with the total renunciation of everything focus on i am brahman always thinking of this be ever of the certitude of being without any qualities renouncing attachment to the body renounce the very substance of thought always be of the conviction that i am the self i am myself remaining thus you will become liberated with no activity or inquiry all is existence consciousness bliss the individual soul non duality the meaning of the scriptures the scriptural texts the homa the ruler of oneself the object of enjoyment the generative cause all the parts shankara the creator of the world the spot of self the settled conclusions what has been said here should never be discussed by a person of discrimination with those whose minds are given to the pleasure of the world or the totally foolish whom one may meet as a fellow traveler en route or read aloud among the ignorant if a woman desires to learn this it should be from the mouth of a brahman all being consciousness the difference of being a woman also disappears even if endowed with a study of the vedas if there is absence of real knowledge the twice born brahman invested with the sacred thread 
is really not twice born only the aspirants after liberation are endowed with the sacred thread of brahman this entire secret has been told by bhagwan shankara himself indeed abiding as that itself there is instruction on the exercise of abiding as that itself ever abide as that itself that which is the supreme brahman the self of all that in which there is no fear of duality non duality awakens peacefulness and non peacefulness both do not exist there is nothing of sankalpa there is no misapprehension no thinking no bhava exists no world no existence of existence or non existence no fear of the pairs of opposites speech and body have ended in dissolution the manifest universe is yet unborn no manifestation of delusion or illusion no wise man or wisdom nothing of own side or opposing side no differentiation such as being vishnu brahma or shankara no truth and non truth no idea as jiva no macrocosm or microcosm no conception of body no intellect or empirical knowledge no conception of desire or time no jivan mukti no enquiry into the self no classifications or differences neither the terror of hell nor the treasures of heaven no experience or suffering no fear of sins no sins no attachments no triad of afflictions no knowledge has yet arisen abide as that by knowing which all is renounced and nothing else remains nothing else is to be known in which i am not in which you are not in which you yourself are not indeed yourself in which there is no difference between one self and one's self in which i is surely dead immersed wherein one does not see nothing shines wherein indeed there is only bliss the supreme bliss mahavakyas great aphorisms the mahavakyas or great aphorisms occurring in the vedas tersely expressing fundamental truth are explained thus pragnanam brahma absolute knowledge is brahman all that is seen is of the nature of knowledge without interspace all the world is indeed only knowledge the jiva is associated with absolute knowledge ishvara is associated with brahman the undivided meaning of this pervaded by the undivided essence is their identity being in the undivided mode while apparently in a form is called jivan mukti the reality that is one undivided essence is called jivan mukti leaving aside the words absolute knowledge and indeed the word brahman leaving aside i all remembrance and bhavas created by thought being in a state of complete voidness leaving aside even the state of silence any vikalpa about silence the egoity that i am the body which is the state of duality and abiding in the firm conclusion that i am the witness of all being ever doubtless about brahman is called the witness state the state of duality the witness state and the nature of the undivided state the one undivided essence there are thus three such states in the world the first is the belief in the duality the second is the doubt of being the witness in the third alone certainty is said to exist having enquired into 
untested the meaning of all three and putting them aside attain certitude reaching the nature of the one undivided essence ever stay in that path being only that itself this sentence is for practice always and is the basis of practice aham brahma asmi i am brahman this sentence is the supreme sentence for reflection it should be reasoned out the meaning of the word aham i is the jiva ishvara is the meaning for the word brahman asmi am is the state of being the undivided nature as this is a statement to be experienced one should always experience it i am brahman eternal peaceful attributeless desireless partless the supreme i am the self the one undivided essence thus in this knowledge one should uninterruptedly consider oneself as the supreme self the third sentence reads on the face of it tatvam asi that you are the meaning of the word tat is ishvara for the word you the meaning is jiva the meaning for the word of identity are is the one undivided essence of the dual mode the witness mode and the mode of undivided existence the undivided one is existence consciousness bliss and it is certain that you are you are brahman changeless consciousness undivided certainty be assured that whoever tells you you are brahman is indeed the guru likewise you are that brahman indeed you are the sadguru too whoever gets conviction in the words of the guru attaining the certitude of truth always makes for liberation there is no need to debate on this it is declared that that you are is the great aphorism of upadesha instruction what arises from the statement i am atma brahma this self is brahman is said to be a statement of perception the meaning of the word this is the jiva and that of atma the self is the supreme ishvara likewise the meaning of brahma is being in the undivided mode the meaning together of the three words is the one of undivided essence the words are one is this one is the self one is brahman the meaning of this is the undivided self the self denotes ishvara the meaning of i am is the undivided essence the dual mode the undivided mode then the undivided essence then be of the conviction he is i the statements are loaded with conditionings the denoted meaning is the simple unconditioned state the individual self being the lower conditioned by littleness of knowledge and such characteristics ishvara by sentience omniscience and such i being the witness should all be renounced as void with the certitude that i am brahman there is no doubt of this i am of the nature of existence consciousness bliss illusoriness of various worlds ribhu reverts again to the illusoriness of all clarifying that thought mind and the state of brahman being different the concept of differences in liberation determination of purity and impurity misconceptions as punya and papa the concept that it is the mind that thinks serenity and control of senses which are states of the mind that is not existent the concept of the worlds brahma loka vishnu loka the world of rudra loka of the nature of egoity 
द वर्ल्ड ऑफ चंद्रा मून ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ द इल्यूशरी माइंड द वर्ल्ड ऑफ आकाशा स्पेस असोसिएटेड विथ ईयर एंड साउंड द वर्ल्ड ऑफ सूर्या सन असोसिएटेड विथ आइज एंड फॉर्म द वर्ल्ड ऑफ वरुणा वाटर असोसिएटेड विथ टंग एंड टेस्ट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ वायु विंड असोसिएटेड विथ स्किन एंड टच द वर्ल्ड ऑफ अस्टविंस द डिवाइन डॉक्टर्स असोसिएटेड विथ द ड्यूएलिटी ऑफ स्मेल द वर्ल्ड ऑफ अग्नि फायर असोसिएटेड विथ स्पीच एंड वर्ड्स द वर्ल्ड ऑफ इंद्रा चीफ ऑफ गॉड्स असोसिएटेड विथ हैंड्स एंड लेग्स द ग्रेट वर्ल्ड ऑफ उपेंद्रा वामना इनकारनेशन असोसिएटेड विथ फीट एंड मूवमेंट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ मृत्यु गॉड ऑफ डेथ असोसिएटेड विथ द ऑर्गन ऑफ एक्सक्रीशन महरलोका द वर्ल्ड ऑफ प्रजापति द प्रोजेनीटर एसोसिएटेड विथ सीक्रेट्स एंड एन्जॉयमेंट आर ऑल इल्यूजरी If the removal of all conceptual knowledge comes about there is attainment of joy the difference between cause and action the worship of deities apart from the self the worship of shiva apart from the self are illusory likewise there is again extensive description that brahman is existence consciousness bliss indeed non-existence of the world the discourse then launches on a string of examples to illustrate the non-existence of the world thus all is unreal ishvara the creator and the world are concepts like the son of a barren woman the world is like the top of a peak in the illusory city of gandharvas celestial beings in the sky like castles in the air the world would be if one could get great satisfaction from drinking of the waters of a mirage if a man could be killed by the peak of a mountain looking like an arrow if the sky is an ocean of blue if the silver appearing on an oyster shell could make a real ornament if a man could enter into the transmigratory cycle by being killed by a snake which is an illusionary superimposition on a rope if burning flames of fire could be quenched by an arrow of flowers if cooking could be done with a log which is the stem of a green plantain tree if instant satisfaction could be had from a bevy of virgins if there were a crow swan in an illusionary forest if the basic mantra bijakshara could constitute a pleasing conversation if a man who died a month ago were to return if a buttermilk could attain the nature of milk if milk coming out of the udder of a cow were to flow back into the teats if an elephant gone mad could be tied by the hair of a tortoise if the meru mountain were to be dragged by lotus tendrils if a river flowing into the ocean were to be dammed by a garland of waves if a lotus were to grow in a flaming conflagration if indra's mansion were to materialize atop a huge mountain if a fish were to come and stay on a lotus seed if the sun were splintered and swallowed up if the mountain meru had a tail if a lion is killed and consumed by a mosquito if all the three worlds were contained in the hollow of an atom if an object in the dream state were to constitute in the waking state if a flowing river stood still if one confirmed blind becomes an expert in the appraisal of gems if the shadow planet rahu the shadow cast on earth by the sun and the moon were to be seen without the sun and the moon if there is growth from a decayed seed if anything born of the mind were to grow if the indigent were to experience the pleasure of the affluent 
if the milk that had been milked out were to flow back again into the teats if there is only a mirror and no reflection if the sky were to disappear and only its reflection remain if there is an elephant in the womb of a gnat there are further topics on brahman conviction in a similar vein as before in a variety of phraseology the topic of the dissolution of all concludes that by conviction in brahman thought sorrow duality desire anger covetousness the knot of the heart arrogance worship contemplation holy ablutions mantra sin merit defects misapprehensions attachments knowledge existence fear the vedas scriptures sleep action the fourth state all come to an end eulogy of the treatise there follows a eulogy about the history and merits of this treatise all of this has been expounded by shiva himself this knowledge has been brought from the presence of shankara in kailasa dakshina murti taught this to the gods for 10000 years vigneshwara taught this for several thousand years shiva himself taught this to parvati for a year vishnu in the ocean of milk taught this to brahma once upon a time in brahma loka i ribhu the mind born son of brahma taught this to my father brahma narada and other sages were also extensively taught obtaining this comprehensively within a short time i have come here millions of sacred streams will not confer even a gift of land will not confer what a single quatrain of this text can renouncing all ever all mantras also all deities all holy baths all bhavas all homas all charities all worship all secrecy all service the guide the guru the entire world all wealth all resolutions all other practice this text should be practiced if one hears this even once in the midst of life he too is liberated the settled conclusions of all scriptures the epitome of all vedas the quintessence of all essences the great essence of all essences there is nothing to equal this text in all the three worlds it is rare to come by not being renowned in the world or in the heavens in brahma loka or in all the scriptures brahma secreted this text and cast it away in the ocean of milk thinking that none should be liberated by this knowing this and reaching the shores of the ocean of milk i took hold of this and seeing what i had caught hold of my father swore at me then i left that world and have come here there are none who knows or expound this hearers of this text are also rare there is no competent guru for this nor are there many who possess this text hence this has not attained prominence to you it has been revealed i shall now return to the place where from i came nidagha's experience nidagha extols in joy o brahman having achieved what i sought i am satisfied by the darshan of yourself my life has become fulfilled i bow to your feet with courtesy not in reality there is no occasion for this i indeed am not real you indeed do not exist nor is there anything of mine there is not even the word brahman when asked by ribu whether he absorbed the knowledge of brahman nidagha continues my ignorance fear constant belief in action the concept of the phenomenal world being real have now reached the conviction of reality 
all the universe has fallen off thought has entirely faded away i am indeed the expanse of consciousness the perfectly full self even the conviction that i am myself has disappeared there is nothing of brahmanhood the ideas of caste the activities prescribed for each order of life are entirely the chimera of thought i am brahma i am janardhana i am all peace all pervasive unfettered i have crossed over i am liberated by your grace i am brahman you yourself do not exist all this is not there is nothing at all no distress no differences no fear no illness no decay for me the gross body i see not nor the subtle nor the casual nor the mind nor the expanse of consciousness nor the world hari shiva no differences at any time no joy or sorrow nor the guru nor the high or low no qualities no fourth state no intellect no doubt no time no body and organs no elements no one pointed concentration nor anything else submerged in the sea of bliss i am endless unborn immortal eternal perfectly full i am the goal of all true guru i have told you all about the nature of my experience i do not prostrate to you all is the offering to the guru the body offered at your feet is instantly raised to ashes by you you are i and i am you i indeed am you yourself i am submerged in the ocean of identity you are indeed the knowledge of that identity no movement is possible for you there is indeed no place to go for you or me there is only one and no second there is nothing for you to say and nothing for me to hear you indeed are not the revered guru i am not the disciple if i make obeisance to myself it is fruitless if there is obeisance to you no fruit will ensue because of differentiation if i made obeisance to you you will say i am an ignoramus if i do it myself i become delimited there is no prostration to anybody at any time in this holy shiva rahasya which has emanated from shiva narrated to devi by shiva and by devi to skanda the knowledge of the supreme ishvara is heard the sun that dispels the stygian darkness of the great maya by narrating only one chapter here of supreme knowledge is tasted whoever expounds this treatise is indeed the guru the supreme brahman shiva himself verily devi herself ganesha himself skanda nandikeshwara dakshina murti practicing in particular that which is contained in this treatise according to the words of the guru the disciple should do no disservice to the guru either by mind or by body the guru is indeed shiva in person if shiva is angered the guru will protect you if the guru is angered no one else can protect you whoever is without the grace of shiva will never know the meaning of this text such knowledge of shiva the ocean of the essence of vedas is not to be found in any other purana legendary lore or itihasa epic this has also been told by shiva himself without samkhya or yoga systems of hindu philosophy easy to acquire by bhava alone to be reached by devotion afflictionless conferring great bliss it is only to be obtained by direct grace 
At the end of each chapter of the text, there is a stanza or two in eulogy of Shiva, not explicitly determinable as part of the discourse of Ribhu, perhaps the words of the narrator. If, after hearing this treatise from the Guru, proper worship is not performed, or Ishwara is not worshipped in the heart, one could be subject to untold mystery in future births. The knower of this treatise becomes Brahman himself. What is the need of incessant repetition? The knowledge confers liberation. Nidagha further says, One should, as long as one is in the body, serve the Guru with wealth and worship him, being of the certitude, I am Brahman. As long as one is in the body, one should wear ashes always, with the uttering of the mantra, beginning, Agni, and such, and the three stripes uttering the mantra, beginning, Traya Ayusham and Trayambaka. Constant bee smearing with ashes is only for those who wear the triple stripes of ashes. This is the Shirovrata, the chief observance. The simple wearing of ashes. By wearing the ashes a year long, I have reached your feet and have attained my emancipation. Among those liberated while yet in the body for the Jeevan Mukta, the shackles of Prarabdha, acquired merits and demerits that have already begun to fructify persist. Experiencing whatever is received through Prarabdha, one should remain happy. I am only consciousness indeed of the nature of existence, consciousness, bliss. Eschewing all differences always, the difference as Brahman also should be renounced. Ribhu concludes, I say this unto you, may you be strengthened by this. Always have this conviction until the grace of Shiva is yours. I indeed am the Supreme Brahman, Sadashiva, Consciousness alone, the attributeless, the partless, the void, the self of all, the witness of the world, the liberated self. Ever be of such conviction yourself. If you have wealth, never withhold from the Supreme Guru the offering to be made to him. If you do, you will be consigned for eons to horrible hell. Nidagha stood up and gave up his wife and children, and also gave up his body like a son, with all affection, and also wealth and grain and garments, and stood besides the Guru. Pleased by the offerings, Ribhu said, You have now acquired knowledge of Brahman. You are a blessed soul indeed. There is no doubt of this. Be ever of the certitude that this is the nature of Brahman. Be of the certitude that there is no liberation other than having this certitude. None other. Certitude is the cause of liberation. There is no other cause indeed. The essence of all the worlds, the essence of all Vedanta, the essence of the equanimous Guru, the essence of the meaning of all Vedas, the essence of all the worlds, the essence of existence, consciousness, bliss, the essence of the victory of equanimity. This is ever the essence of liberation, the liberation from all words, the liberation that is ever the fourth state, the easiest liberation of all, the liberation from all domains. This is complete liberation attained by just listening and reflection. Ribhu, thus conveying this description of knowledge of Shiva, addressed Nidagha in the midst of the assembled sages. They too, pleased on hearing this essence of the words of the Vedas, prostrated and spoke thus in great joy. Sages, you are the father, the mother, the guru, the friend and the well-wisher. You led us across the ocean of ignorance to the shore. You are our refuge. 
leading us by your power you make us happy by the words of shiva which mean by the strength of my words alone is there easy access to the attainment of the supreme path om shri ramanarpanamastu there is no coming into being no extinction no one bound and no one making effort no one for perfection yearning no one attaining freedom this is the truth supreme garland of gurus sayings verse 1227 all the letters in this book add up to a single imperishable letter this as written you have read the single letter shines forever of its own accord within the heart who can hope to write it bhagavan shri ramana om shanti shanti shanti